When hands reach out beyond divides And hope is truly found Each chain of hate will fall away And bells of peace shall sound And bells of peace, of peace shall sound Each chain of hate will fall away And bells of peace shall sound When fear no longer guides our steps And days of war are done God's dream for all shall live anew our hearts will heal as one Our hearts will heal, will heal as one Our hearts will heal as one God's dream for all shall live anew Our hearts will heal as one when race and creed blind us no more And neighbor's face we'll see And we shall dance the whole world round For love will set us free For love, yes, love will set us free for love will set us free And we shall dance the whole world round For love will set us free Good morning. The scripture readings this morning are from Matthew 10 verses 5 to 7. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Thanks be to God for these words. Amen. It's, uh, it's Saturday at 1 o'clock, uh, an hour before the march. I'm here at the church. Love your neighbor. Black Lives Matter. I just want to give you a sense of, of the location of the church compared to where the march is. And get ready. I haven't worn one of these in probably close to two decades, but I want it to be very clear who and what I represent today. So walk with me now as we head to the park and celebrate and proclaim that love your neighbor means Black Lives Matter. switch to the front camera. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you guys? Okay. Good. As we're walking down the street, I invite you to watch this video prepared by the Black Clergy Network 
of the United Church of Canada. How am I doing? Who cares? Il serait peut-être mieux de vous retourner la question. How can you help? How can you help dismantle the sin of racism? How have you been complacent? Privileged. How do we as a church do the mission of God's work in the world? To love one another as God has loved us. Sans considération de race ou de culture. Isn't race a fake construct anyway? My blackness centers whiteness. It others me. It forces us to live within a system of opposition. And I reject that. Yet since we persist in this system of lies, of white supremacy, racism, Black lives matter. Trop longtemps, le corps du noir a été considéré comme quelque chose inférieur à la condition humaine. À peine une commodité. The deaths of Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, and the threat to Christian Cooper's life confirm this disheartening truth. It is facile to point a finger to events far away from home. Yet racism exists in Canada and it is not recent. Viola Desmond lamented this. The family of Andrew Loku, Regis Korczynski Parquet lament this. Black lives live and lament this reality every single day. I didn't even know that I was black until I came to this country, Canada. A country I thought was welcoming, a country of acceptance. It doesn't matter, I was born here and people are always trying to locate me somewhere else. Where are you from? Where are your parents from? from away. Bien que nous soyons tous appelés à baptiser au nom du Père, du Fils et du Saint-Esprit, we fail to truly live into our baptism. To repent in order to change our ways. Nothing has changed. How am I doing? Comment ça va? I am numb. I am traumatized. I can barely find the words to say. I'm tired. I'm tired. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. I need you to do something. Say something. Votre silence est assourdissant. I'm angry. I'm courageous enough to feel this, this rage. Your moments of kindness are not enough. We need to center ourselves on something more than whiteness. Because I love God with all my heart, with all my strength, with all my soul, with all my mind. And I love this diverse, body of people filled with the Holy Spirit, who we call the church, but I can't breathe. 
mais je n'arrive pas à respirer. This anger, this anger's foundation is deep seated pain. It is taking its toll emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And still, I serve because I am called. I was promised that the burden would be light, the yoke would be easy, and yet... What if what's on my neck is not a stole, but a knee? A knee of subtle mistreatment or blatant aggression. As I am seen as a threat and I am profiled by those I meet in my community. Le genou du formalisme. Comme dans l'église ou au culte. My gifts are ignored or reframed. De mes collègues blancs. To then be accepted. A knee of isolation and oppression. As my academic work is scrutinized through a biased white lens. And I might not challenge anyone because they might cry. Les Noirs vivent et décrit cette honteuse réalité. Don't you know that I am a person? When you see me, I want you to see my humanity. How I am made in God's image, just like you. Just like you. I have hope. God is good. But I am not good with a system of racism. I am not good. My allies are not good. We all are fed up. I am hopeful that I will be seen, that I will be heard, that I will be affirmed. I look forward to the day when we will dismantle the system of racism as participants in God's reconciling and transformative work. I look forward to the day of redemption. Where is God in all of this? Dieu est ici pour nous inspirer à changer. We are not alone. Nous ne sommes pas seuls. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And here we are. This is where people will be gathering over the next hour and preparing to march. So I, uh, I invited you to watch the video of my black colleagues in ministry from the United Church of Canada. And their message hits hard. I'm gonna pick up on one question that they asked right now. I, I, uh, I can't remember the exact phrasing of it, but it basically boils down to what are we prepared to do? So there's a number of things that we as people of privilege can do. The first thing is to stop talking. Especially when we're triggered. Especially when somebody is confronting us with our privilege and the latent racism that resides within us that we don't recognize because we were raised with it. We don't see it till somebody points it out to us. So stop talking. Second thing is listen. Listen to the people of color around you and 
listen to their view of the world. Third thing is educate yourself. Make the effort to do that. Don't expect somebody else to do it for you. Don't expect any person of color to take the step to educate you. That's your responsibility. And if you don't know how to, how to do that, where to start, call me, I'll help. Because I had to start. The next thing to do is take a knee. Relinquish your power in any situation. Whether it's a conversation or a conflict or anything, relinquish your power and demonstrate that you're relinquishing your power. And then when you've listened and learned and relinquished your power, stand back up again and raise your fist and join your voices loud with your sisters and brothers who cannot breathe and proclaim that black lives matter. God bless and here we go. I'm blown away by the turnout. It's amazing. Um, I, I'm used to estimating congregation sizes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say we probably got 400 people here. That would be my best guess. It looks like about 400 in total. So this is turning out to be everything that we hoped it would be peaceful and supportive. It looks like mostly just people uh, saying way to go. This is awesome for an event organized by high school students here in Waterdown. It's been an honor to come alongside them. This is theirs, and Camille has done a great job. This is way bigger than I thought. Way bigger. They're still coming around the corner at Main Street. This is way more than 400 people. This is looking more like a thousand. In today's passage, Jesus sends his disciples out to fulfill their mission. We are Jesus' disciples being sent out to fulfill our mission. And he sends them to the lost sheep. And he sends us to the lost sheep. The lost sheep are those who need to experience the love of God in a life-changing way. And he tells us to go and proclaim the good news that the kingdom of heaven has come near. That's our task today. To tell people who feel like they have been abandoned that the kingdom of heaven has come near. To proclaim, not tell. To proclaim that the kingdom of heaven has come near. Jesus also tells us to cure the sick. And we think that's what this is. But it can be more than that. He tells us to cleanse the lepers. And today we are going to proclaim love among those who sometimes feel like they've been treated like lepers. And Jesus tells us to go and cast out demons. So today, we cast out the demon of racism. We go among the lost sheep to heal, to cleanse, to cast out by proclaiming that love your neighbor means Black Lives Matter. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today.
Sometimes it takes a Mother Teresa. Sometimes it takes a Martin Luther King Jr. And sometimes it takes a grade 12 student named Camille Ebro. Instead of speaking our prayer today, let's sing it. I'm going to let Rick lead us in healing rain as our prayer today. Jesus has challenged you to go into the world and bring healing rain, to bring healing, to bring hope, to bring love. 
may that be your challenge for this week. Take care, God bless, and we'll see you next week.